Hi everyone, it's me, Alma. I hope you can see me and hear me. Let me know. All right, hey everyone. So for today, we're gonna talk about your blog traffic. If it's tanking down, 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 <laughs> what can you do with it, right? <laughs> All right, so say hi if you're here. My name is Alna from twinswami.com and oh hey Crystal, glad you can make it. All right, so excuse me if I sound very stuffed up right now. I've been having really bad allergies. Just uh, two days ago, it was um, raining and thunderstorm and unfortunately I have um, something called thunderstorm asthma. So when the thunderstorm comes, I really have a hard time breathing and stuff, so I'm getting a little bit better right now. Just a post nasal trip. Anyways, <laughs> that's my health. All right. So I want to help you. Let me know if your blog traffic is doing good or not. And if it's tanking, there's going to be some things that I want to help you so that you can start growing your traffic. All right. So just to let you know, for my twins mommy blog, I just looked at my traffic. I really don't look at it every day, but I saw that my traffic's down by 15%, but I'm not too worried about it. Right. Um, because I, I, I know the reason why, um, for me, and it might be even for you, if your traffic all of a sudden takes a dip, look at the previous month. Um, maybe you had a very popular, uh, post that went, you know, almost viral on Pinterest or, um, a lot of people were sharing it or something like that. Um, that's what happened to me. I, I had a mini viral pin, um, for last month and even the month before. And so traffic is dying down to what it is like normally. So I'm not too worried with that dip of traffic. So that could be one reason why your traffic might be dipping. Um, but if you have any questions about your specific blog traffic, your page views, just post them in. Maybe I can help you during this little you know talk. Um, but yeah, I thought I could just give you some ideas of why I think your traffic might be going on a downward spiral than an upward spiral, even though you're doing the same things or you feel like you're doing the same things that you've been doing, you know, for the last quarter or for over the summer or whatnot. All right. Well, um, the first thing to really look at, um, is seasonal fluctuations, right? In the blogging world, um, you're going to have high traffic months and low traffic months. Generally the summer is a slow time. Um, and during October, November, December, it will start to pick up again and then it'll reach its peak in January. That's when a whole bunch of people decide to start blogs, you know, that want to change in their life. So they're going to look online for things like that. Right. So the January is a big traffic month for a lot of people and gearing up for that. So you're going to see spikes in the, in the last quarter. Definitely. Hey, Rachel, glad you can make it. If you have any questions about your blog traffic or what's happening, um, just post them here. If it's based on social media traffic, let me know. Uh, maybe I can help you with that. But yeah, um, so really know the seasonal fluctuations for your blog and your niche. Um, you know, like if your niche is all about camping, you know, and all about like, um, you know, traveling. Well, then the summer is going to be your biggest traffic month, right? Maybe the winter, maybe December and January won't be your biggest traffic month, right? Um, so I'm just saying as a normal blogger in what in the in like in, in general, as far as your niche goes, um, you're going to find fluctuations during holidays and during um, the summer months, like spring, summer. All right. So and then also you want to take a look at algorithm updates, Google updates, Pinterest updates, Facebook updates, things like that, um, that can really affect your traffic. And I know a lot of people right now, I've been noticing in Facebook groups that they're talking about their trip, their traffic on, um, from Pinterest is, is dying down. And yeah, you know, Pinterest is changing up things They're they're you know, whenever they do a little bit of a revamp, there's going to be glitches on Pinterest. So, you know, they're going to do some kind of update. And so things are happening on, on the Pinterest platform that may affect your monthly views on Pinterest and your click through rate on, on Pinterest to your blog. So, um, just know that that's probably the reason why, and it's not because you're not doing anything. It's something that is beyond your control, right? 
So like for me, like I told you, my, my traffic on Twins Mommy went down 15%, but I know that's partly from a viral pin and partly from this Google update that recently happened. Um, I haven't really looked closely at the keywords that I'm ranking for, but there have been some keywords that have you know, went down from, you know, four to six or whatnot on, on page one kind of thing. So, um, that shows me that there's, you know, some kind of change that went, went on. And so like, I need to work on that. So we'll go into, um, specific tactics, but I just wanted to talk about seasonal fluctuations. So be aware of that. And so don't get all hang, you know, hung up on like, ah, oh, my traffic is, is dipping the holidays, the same thing. Um, I talked about Pinterest algorithm updates. I'm just looking at my notes here. Google updates for sure. Okay. So those are the main causes. Uh, viral pin I was mentioning as an, as a main cause of why your traffic is dipping. And then of course the, one of the other biggest reasons my hair is really wild at night, eh? Is, you know, your content, your content schedule. Did you just stop blogging for a while. That happens to me. I'll get in a little stint and blog for like two weeks straight and, and post three times a week for two weeks. And then I'll have a huge break because life gets in the way. And then I forget to blog and, you know, I'm now worried about my other blogs. And so like, I don't focus on Twins Mommy as much and I have to focus on my other blogs. And, and so then two weeks goes by and I don't have a post. Well, no wonder why my traffic isn't growing. No wonder why it might even be dipping. Um, you need to show Google that you are, um, you have a dynamic blog, that your blog is updated frequently, okay? I have a very, um, one of my blogs is is SEO'd, meaning that it gets like 90% of its traffic from Google. And there's been times where I've stopped blogging on that site for oh, maybe only like two weeks, I'd stopped because I'm totally busy with Twins Mommy or I'm totally busy starting a new blog and my traffic starts dipping. And I know that I need to update my site for Google to know that this is still a relevant site. This is an up-to-date site. Um, it is the go-to niche for my industry. This is the blog to go to. So I need to show Google that I'm pumping out content. Um, frequently. I don't need to do it every day. I don't need to do it every other day, but I do need to do it at least, you know, consistently. So weekly, you know, is, is fine for me. So that's what I'm, I'm aiming for, for my blog that is SEO'd. Um, and as regard for Pinterest traffic, you don't need to come update your blog per se with new content, but you do need to show Pinterest that you are updating your profile and your, and the platform for Pinterest. So we'll dive into that as well. All right. So the first thing to do once you notice that there's this dip, so you figured out what, what's causing this, you know, dip in traffic is to wait it out. I want you to do nothing for a while. I want you to look on Facebook, see what people are talking about. Like I've, I've noticed this, people are talking about Pinterest and how their traffic is declining. Well, I'm not doing anything right now for my Pinterest profile. I'm not going to dive in and start looking at my analytics and seeing what's happening for me. Yeah, my monthly views are going down. Um, my click-through rates are still fine. I mean, my like my traffic took a dip. It's 15% down. So I'm still waiting it out um, to see if it's seasonal, to see if it's this Google update or this uh, algorithm change that Pinterest has. So I need to sort of wait it out. And I suggest you do the same. You can still listen to the social chatter online to see what other people are doing what other people, what, what their tactics, they might let you know that they're going to start doing tailwind more, or they're going to start, um, doing more pins or something. They might suggest that. So keep an eye on that and see what they say. Cause a lot of people will tell you what they're doing for their marketing strategy. So you can listen to that chatter. Don't do anything. Don't try anything and just wait it out. It's hard. I know it's hard not to do nothing, but, but don't just keep doing the same thing, which means writing blog posts, keep writing that blog post and promoting it in the way that you promote it. Um, the second thing that I suggest you do is a blog challenge. I want you to challenge yourself. Um, and the best thing you can do is do that with, um, giving yourself a time frame and seeing if you can create a new content every, every day. Now I do recommend a blog post every day for let's say 10 days, 
But you know what? Why don't you try doing different types of content to see if maybe you can grow even faster? I haven't done that strategy, but it might work for you. So the first day you do a blog post, the second day you do a Facebook Live, the third day you create a new separate YouTube video, the fourth day you do an Instagram Live, the fifth day you do another blog post, and so on and so on kind of thing. On the sixth day you create an infographic, things like that. And see if you create these different types of content that can help you with your uh, traffic overall. Um, so that's something to think about. Like I like writing blog posts every day. I get in a habit of writing every day and then I can promote that content. But maybe you, if you repurpose that content, maybe if you try different ways, different platforms for your content, that maybe you'll attract a bigger audience and then people will start coming back to your blog. So every purpose of content has to lead back to your blog or to a landing page for people to sign up to whatever you're offering. Okay. So that infographic has to lead back to a blog post that Facebook live has to lead back to your blog post or landing page or whatnot. All right. So, um, give yourself that blog challenge. And so, you know, say I'm going to do for five days straight, I'm going to create content for my blog every single day. Okay. So try that. The third thing you can do is start optimizing your Pinterest profile. Now, um, I don't know how many of you are using Pinterest for traffic, but it is a great source. So let's go, hold on, let me just open up my Pinterest profile and see what I can show you. Um, okay, so you can start, oops, optimizing your, your boards. Okay, so I want you to start looking at your board titles. Start creating new boards, all right, um, based on your niche. So make maybe like five new boards in in one of your niche topics. So for me, it would be traffic. So I would create five new boards based on traffic or marketing, okay? Look at the board names to see if they're relevant, if they're keyworded right. Um, you know, maybe money is too broad. Maybe I can change this to make money online. You know, search for that for keywords and see if that's something that's viable. So make money and then from home. So maybe I can make a board called make money from home, make money online. There you go. Make money fast, make money. So those are things that I could create new blog, uh, more Pinterest boards with these topics right there. Those could be my brand new uh, board topics in the whole money type, all right? So making new boards can help because then you can um, start adding more pins. So optimizing your board titles to making sure they're relevant and then also making sure that your descriptions are keyworded right, right? Pinterest really, really looks at where your pin is going to when you pin it. So you are in charge of pinning that first pin to the highly optimized board, right? To show Pinterest that that's what it's for. Okay. Now in my course, ready, set, block for traffic, I do talk about exactly the type of board you need to pin for your, um, for your, the blog post that you have. All right. So <clears throat> for example, this is my money board and everything on here should, should <laughs> have something with the word money in it, money, dollar signs, something like that. All right. To show Pinterest that this is a money board. All right. So making sure you do that and you can tell if your board is keyworded right by just clicking on more ideas. Is Pinterest understanding that you want these ideas for this board and see, okay, well, this is a money related thing. This is promoted. So that doesn't matter. Um, pay you money, money, money. This is all geared towards money, 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 money. So I've, I've keyworded this board correctly, right? Pinterest knows that this is the type of content I want on this board. So you can have like a little blog, uh, Pinterest audit and see if your boards are keyworded, right? If not, then change your description, change the name of your board. Okay. These are things that you can work on. Um, and then when you create a new board, I want you to uh, start pinning content on that. So it will give you, um, a section here so that you can pin the type of pins that you want, but you can just type in like minimal minimalist ideas. You can just type that in and start pinning from the, um, from the first row just to get those popular pins. So you would just uh, keyword that new board quickly with these pins and then Pinterest will eventually give you a tab in that board of more ideas. And then you can pin more ideas that are min, um, based on that topic. All right, so 
Um, that was one. Do, 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 do. Yes, I did talk about that. Well, let me see if there's any questions. Hold on. Hey, everyone. Jane asks, can you have too many boards? I have 250 boards. I don't think you can have too many boards. No. I mean, as long as you you are pinning to them consistently, um, then I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I have 308 boards. <laughs> so and a lot of them are or uh, group boards. So and I don't I don't pin to those group boards to all of my group boards, but I try to pin to my boards. And what I've done, um, what's nice is that with Tailwind, I actually created a list of all my relevant boards. So as soon as I made those boards, I wanted to Tailwind to update my list. So I have a list of that's called Twins Mommy Boards. And so I know that I can um, add fresh pins to those boards. So make sure with Pinterest, the boards that you do create, you have fresh pins going into them daily, okay? If you don't, then that board gets stale and then the pins on that board aren't are demoted. They're not being shown um, to Pinterest, unless of course, a copy of that pin is shared somewhere else and it's exploding somewhere else, of course. But in general, that board won't get recognized. You know, Pinterest does show up boards on your feed. They will recommend other boards on your feed. You want your board to be shown to other pinners. Um, so keep those boards fresh by updating it often. Um, Rachel, can you share an idea of how to make a good description for a Pinterest board? Yeah, I mean, I just like to pump a lot of keywords in it, but I try to do it in, a, you know, like in a sentence kind of. So let's look at my money, my money board description. Oh, well, let's look at my minimalist. Minimalist was one of my newest boards that I created. I mean, it's a couple, like I didn't even create a description. So like if I was going to create a description for this, see, this was a new board that I quickly added and I totally forgot to write a description. Um, so I would definitely write minimalist ideas um, to help families um, declutter. So declutter. So I think of a web. So I have minimalist ideas in the center and I think of keywords as I'm writing that relate to that. So decluttering and organization are two things I believe are around minimalist ideas. Um, clean space. I'm just at the top of my head. I'm thinking of that. So I'm going to write all this down in my description. I was going to write it out as sort of like what do they call it? Or like a brain dump kind of thing. So minimalist ideas to help families declutter um, their um, their home and space. Um, so then bedroom minim minimalist ideas, uh, kitchen. And then I'm just going to just type in the keywords that I briefly saw, ideas. Um, for families, um, organize and declutter to declutter to open up your space for a minimal life. So, I mean, this is this would what I would write, and then I would just save it, and then I would just make sure I would type in the keyword again min minimalist ideas. And then, so and then I would just quickly see, okay, did I add the word simplify? No, I added home. I didn't add DIY. I didn't add close. So then I would go back and like, okay, let me add the word simplify in there. Let me add the word close. Um, and then I would look at the tiles here, simple living. So I would add that to my, um, my description. Okay. So you can do that before you write your description. I like to just freestyle it. Like for me, I just freestyle it and just think of what I think the keywords would be because like as a normal person on Pinterest, I mean, they're going to just type in those normal things in their mind, right? They're not going to be, they're not going to be keywording what they're searching for, right? Pinterest is going to serve that up for them. They're going to type in minimalist bedroom and then they might see what Pinterest gives them, right? You can add those definitely to your description, but I would write it as if I was a person like a like a person on Pinterest and what they're searching for and what they want. And then I would just add, sprinkle in those keywords in my description. Hey, best mom hack. Is it better to have lots of boards or more general boards and split into sections? Like so general pin parenting board with more specific sections or all different boards for more specific parenting topics. I would do bo uh, both, honestly. Um, 
for me, I I would have your main uh, key, a niche board. So like for me, for Twins Mommy, it was money was one of them. But I also have a budgeting board and financial advice board. I have two of those boards that are related to money. Um, so those are those are boards that I have, but my main one is money and I'll put most of my main pins in the main board. Um, I have blogger tips, blog plans, starting a blog. I have a lot of blogging related, make money blogging, um, blog post ideas, blog post that I branch out because I want to, I want to let Pinterest know and Google know that Twins Mommy is a, is a blog about blogging tips in general. So I'm going to have a lot of boards on that, but my main one is blogger tips. All right. So create those main hubs, that main board, and then you can branch out. So like for smart mom ideas, I did that recently. So for the longest time, I only had one parenting, no, one pregnancy board. Okay. And then I decided, you know what? I need to make like five more pregnancy boards. And that's what I did. I ended up making uh, different types of pregnancy boards. So I have here post pregnancy. Uh, and here's my main pregnancy. I have 2000 pins, main pregnancy board, post pregnancy, um, first trimester pregnancy, preparing for pregnancy, pregnancy by tri. So do you see how I branched out now from pregnancy and I'm slowly adding pins to these. I have an, an 190 pins in here, 154. So yeah, because pregnancy is such a huge topic on Pinterest, I needed to branch out so that I could put my pins in these boards and um, keyword those right so that Pinterest knows that Smart Mom Ideas is really about pregnancy and postpartum and things in that sort of niche idea. Okay, so I hope that helps. Oh, I didn't even show you, did I? Sorry. Here you go. <laughs> I do that all the time. I talk and I assume that you guys are watching everything that I'm doing, but you're not. So here's Smart Mom Ideas. Sorry. And I have post-pregnancy. I have pregnancy, um, preparing for pregnancy. So here are all my boards right here. Okay. Sorry about that. Rachel, the Facebook Live keeps freezing and buffing. Not sure on who it is. Oh, sorry about that. I hope you can see it. Seems better. I closed an open event. Okay, good. I'm <laughs> glad you can see me. <laughs> Uh, all right, everyone. Okay, so that's that's Pinterest to help you regarding your board. So that was just like your board and optimizing your profile, okay? So you want Pinterest to know exactly what your, your profile is about so that it can serve your pins to the best type of audience, okay? So that's one part of doing the Pinterest thing. Um, of course, the biggest thing right now is making those, those pins, making those uh, pins every day. So like for Smart Mom Ideas, I've been trying to make pins every day, like three pins a day. Um, so, uh, you know, this was a new pin. It just recently got out on Pinterest here. This is a new pin. So I'm making, this was a good pin that took off really well. Um, and same with this one, but like this 20 croc, I think I made a new pin for that recently. So I go back and I make new pins for good blog posts that did well. Um, back in the day, like a year ago kind of thing. Um, I thought I did the crock pot one. Do, 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 do. Maybe I didn't. I thought I did though. Hmm. Well, anyways, so that's what I'm doing for Smart Mom Ideas is creating like new pins of popular old blog posts that I had from from like a year ago. I thought I did. Now I'm all like, sorry if I'm giving you a, a headache. So like this morning sickness one, it's slowly taking off. That was an old pin that sort of did well last when I, when I published it last year. Okay. Okay. So that, and then also my um, freelance writing profile. This is my newest profile. And so it doesn't get a lot of um, traffic from Pinterest, right? My, this blog is highly SEO'd, so I'm working hard with creating new pins. So like for this profile, I'm creating like a lot of new pins in different styles. So like this was a new pin, but see people aren't clicking through. So I'm gonna watch this and I'm thinking it's the font because I've been using like this font and that's sort of been taking off a little bit more. 
Um, but you can see with my freelance writing profile, I mean, people aren't clicking over. Like this was my most popular one so far, this mistakes. So I'm thinking about creating more mistake type. So like I created this, you know, why you're not landing any freelance writing jobs. And I'm going to see if that takes off. But maybe, you know, for this profile, I need to really hit hard on the the wrong things you're doing, you know, don't do these things. And maybe I can get like the 15 terrible pitching mistakes. See, like at least I got someone to click through. So maybe, maybe that's what I have to do. I don't know. I have to like, I'm playing around with this profile, creating pins with like huge fonts. Um, I'm finding that people really like pins for this niche to be all in one. Like, how do you make a living? How do you stay home and make a living as a writer? How do you, you know, um, work from home full time and make a living? Like those pins do well in this niche. And then I'm finding the mistakes type of pins are, are doing well. And so I'm playing around with large fonts, easy to read fonts, things like that on this profile to get those click throughs. Okay. Oh, best mom hack. Feed is clean and clear for me. Okay, good. Also, I am not sure why I'm double commenting myself and page. So sorry. That's okay. That's great. All right. So try creating new pins that look different each time. So create different, uh, different brand style pins that lead back to your blog posts. That's what I'm doing with all my profiles now. I'm trying to create like different, different looks to my pins, different types of images that I'm using um, and seeing what works. Okay. Okay. So one other thing that I'm going to start doing more of, which I know everyone says this, but they, because it works, but it's just so time consuming is the whole guest posting. Okay. Now Google recently announced some kind of, um, my husband notified me of this. Um, right here, if you can see it, this thing right here. <laughs> can you really see what it says right here? It says that Google announced two new link attributes, sponsored and UGC, to that join no follow is wasted to by the nature of links. So what this means is that Google now knows that if you guest post and add links to those guest posts, that you'll gain some backlinks to it, okay? So we know what people usually do when they guest post, they know, Google know supposedly what I've learned and what people know is that when you guest post, Google knows that you wrote that post on a different blog. So let's say you decided to write for Scary Mommy and you write that blog post and you have your author bio and you link to your blog and maybe even add a link to the blog post of your blog you know, you add a, a link to your blog in that blog post in Scary Mommy. Scary Mommy is a very popular site. So that that's a backlink for you. You're getting that really strong backlink that Google sees like, oh, wow, look at Scary Mommy trusts this blogger because they're linking to it. You know, it must be a credible, trust trustworthy blog kind of thing. So Google gets those those signals. But I was learned, I was learned into <laughs> I learned that, you know, Google recognizes that you wrote that content, you wrote that guest post. So they're going to not put as much link juice to those links, especially your author bio links. But with that update, it seems like Google never really understood that. They can't really tell the difference between if you wrote it or didn't. So guest posting should really um, be a great way to get those backlinks, to get that authority, that trust that you want for your blog. So I'm going to start doing more guest posting and trying to get on guest posts with blogs that are popular with high domain authority. Hey, hi, Elna. Finally could join. Great. You're live streaming today. Do you use Canva to create all of your pins and do you use other kinds of apps? I use Photoshop actually for my pins. Um, so that's what I use. I sometimes use Canva for, I usually use Canva for YouTube thumbnails and Canva for like infographics and some Canva for some type of pins. But most of my pins are just, uh, I use Photoshop. Um, sometimes Keynote too. I do that. Um, but yeah, so guest posting, as I was saying, so guest posting is actually a really good option. Um, try to find blogs that you can guest post on that are popular. 
And so, you know, you can always visit like, you know, similar web to see how popular that, that blog is. Um, sometimes they may not show the traffic because it's the blog is new, right? Or it hasn't reached um, enough traffic to show. But if I, you know, did Scary Mommy. we can quickly see that, you know, the traffic on this site is 5 million monthly viewers. That's a really good popular site that offers guest posting um, to you. So, you know, take advantage of that, that um, guest posting opportunity and see if you can drop a link of your blog in that blog post somehow. Hey, Jane. So are you saying it would be even better to guest post now? Yes, I believe it will be. I mean, like I said, I was I was under the impression that Google recognizes your content on other people's blogs. So they, you know, they know that, well, you wrote it. So of course, you're going to link to your content. So I'm not going to I'm going to devalue those links anyways, because you wrote it, you're the author. But it seems like from this update that that's not true, or that they can't figure it out completely. So I would jump on the bandwagon and start guest posting on popular sites, okay? Um, that's what I'm going to try and do. And so I'm going to focus on that and see if I can get, you know, some guest posting opportunities on like, you know, ConvertKit's blog or other blogs and stuff like that. Another thing you can do too for those backlinks is using something like Haro, right? They'll help a reporter out. So see if you can grab some backlinks that way as well. Um, but guest posting is by far the easiest, um, to do than using something like Haro. All right. So those, um, those are my suggestions. If your traffic is tanking, um, like the main traffic's for, like, if you have a new blog, um, you're a new blogger and like, this is your first year of blogging, then you can start incorporating those tactics. You know, if your blog is a couple years old, there's other tactics that you can use for sure. Um, like for me, I'm going to really rely on guest posting, but you know, I'm going to use other, other ways of marketing my blog and, um, using influencer networking opportunities and things like that. Um, blogger outreach, stuff like that, that can help. So, you know, advanced bloggers, you can use those tactics, um, to see if you can, um, collaborate and then gain those. Uh, backlinks gain that um, authority on pin on Pinterest and on your blog and in Google kind of thing. All right, everyone. So if you guys have any questions specifically about your page views or about traffic, let me know. Um, but those are my main tip tips for your traffic tanking. You know, focus on those things: content, guest posting, um, optimizing your Pinterest profile, creating daily pins, things like that. Um, doing that blog challenge and try that tactic of creating um, new content every day for your different social media platforms and seeing if that can help because that's something that I'm interested in doing as well. So, all right, everyone, if that's that, I'll leave you be. Thank you for joining me on um, take a look at my, my description. If you need more help with traffic, especially SEO and Pinterest, you know, um, check out ready, set blog for traffic because I do put all my best tips, my best recommendations, my proven tactics in that course. Um, so you can jump right in and, and see what I'm talking about. All right, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.